my heart is full. So we turn uh, to Matthew 18, 1 through 7 again. As I said, words of Jesus speaking to children. Let's think it through through the lens of legacy. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? So he called a little child to him, and then he placed the child among them. And he said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. He goes on to say, If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them to have a millstone hung around their neck for them to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of the things that cause people to stumble. Such things must come, but woe to the person through whom they come. The topic of stewardship must be approached, must be approached with great joy, not with trepidation, not with anxiety or any kind of resentment. You have to have fun with it. This Stewardship Awareness Beer 2016. <laughs> Hope springs eternal every year. The joy comes from knowing that you are one of God's own. That's where we start. You are chosen. You didn't earn this, you didn't buy this, you didn't work for this salvation, for this privilege. It's all a gift. When we approach the topic of stewardship, we have got to approach it not forgetting one of the most basic, but difficult to believe truths out there. Jesus died up there for you, individually. And that is where gratitude begins. Jesus was selfless, sacrificial, and giving. As disciples of Him, it is our call to respond to grace and model ourselves after that life, selfless, sacrificial, and giving. That comes in many different forms. Yes, we approach our money sacrificially and selflessly. That doesn't mean you're not supposed to have anything or any money. It doesn't mean that you don't save or invest your money wisely. It means that you treat it differently. You treat it in a holy way. Your model and what you spend your money on and surround yourself with should reflect Jesus, selfless, sacrificial, and giving. I would never stand here and tell you how to spend your money. You don't want me doing that. But that would be wrong of me. And it is not my role, I told you last week, to compel or convince you to give. I am no salesperson for the church. I will stand up here, though, and urge you to be selfless, sacrificial, and giving with your life, and yes, your money. Because it's not just money. To reflect the life of Jesus in our lives, to practice what I would call true stewardship of all resources, we are called to be selfless, sacrificial, and giving. We're called by Him being those things. Jesus made it all about you. 
When you live out those things, you, like Jesus, you then get to make it all about others, not yourself. Who should we make it about then, if it's not about us? Because the choices and the needs in this world when it comes to others in need seems endless. I've got a place to start. Call it a baby step. But why don't we make it about them, our children? Because that's what Jesus did. We know this is not the only New Testament story about Jesus and children. Just one chapter later, Jesus' disciples who think they have a pretty good grasp on what's what and what's important. They're quick to chastise those who bring the children to Jesus for a blessing. They say, he doesn't have time for that. And they think, right? The man has a lot more important things to accomplish here. But instead, it is them that are reprimanded. Jesus said, let the children come to me. Do not stop them. Jesus makes it clear. Again, the kingdom is theirs. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves them. In this chapter, what we read, Jesus has strong words to the answer of a question that was asked him. Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Oh my, what a good question, right? Don't we want to know who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Don't you want to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? So Jesus reached down and he picked up a kiddo and he told them, this is your model for the kingdom of heaven. Do you remember when you had the humility and the meekness of a child? Do you remember that? Jesus is so serious about kids that he says, you might as well, he doesn't threaten this, he says you may as well be thrown into the ocean with a really, really heavy rock tied around your neck if you were going to cause one of these kids to stumble on the road to grace. Jesus was very serious about making it about them, the little ones. Perhaps we should model that too. Perhaps that's our starting place. The kingdom is theirs. And from his mouth, when you welcome a child, you welcome the one and only Jesus. I think we'd agree there are a few inevitabilities in this life, aren't there, right? What's the old saying? Death and Death and taxes, right? But there's more, there's more than that. More inevitabilities than that. I'm a positive person. There's the love of God. That's an inevitability. There's the changing of the seasons. We know what's coming. We know when's it gonna, when it's going to come. There's the rhythm of the week. There are days that go by and turn into years. They add up, don't they? That's inevitable. And while I know they seem to be going by quicker, they're not. It's pretty standard. There is rotation and all. But that leads us to another inevitability. With each day that passes, we age. Children grow into adolescence, and before you know it, they're adult men and women. We age until the child on the outside anyways is totally gone, isn't it? On the outside. And then before you know it, it's been a generation. 
We age and we soon forget what it's like to be humble like a child. To grasp, to understand simple things. To bravely learn from our mistakes that we make all the time when we're learning these things. Many of us who grew up have children of our own. Or you're an aunt or an uncle to this next generation. If you had grown into a selfish adult at this point, you soon become a little less selfish around the little ones. If you had not fully matured yet, well, this is a big step towards that, let me tell you. Life is different. You see the world through the eyes of a parent, through the eyes of a father, a mother, an aunt, an uncle, through the eyes of a grown-up. And just like Jesus taught, you start looking out for the stumbling blocks of life, and, like Jesus, you do become angry when grown-ups put stumbling blocks in front of the growth of children. How could they? When you grow up, you become a lot more selfless. You become a little bit more sacrificial and giving with your time and your money. Then, when you really get it, when God's got you and stewardship really clicks, you start thinking in a way you might not have ever thought before. A word comes to mind that used to mean something far different. You become much more driven by legacy. Legacy leaving is a part of the lifelong journey of discipleship. And it has everything to do with stewardship. Because guess what? Whether we think we are or not, we are leaving behind a whole lot of what we see, of what we own, of what we've said, and what we've done with our time, with our money, with our life. We are leaving that behind. Those things last past you whether you think they do or not. Jesus left a legacy. Jesus' legacy is in his timeless teaching. His legacy is you and me. And I can't stress this enough, the legacy of Jesus is the church. The legacy of Jesus is the church. The church is the place where legacy lives and breathes. The church has been for generations and it will continue to be for generations until that day Jesus comes again. The church must then be fertile ground for leaving a legacy. The church then must be like Jesus with all its things, selfless, sacrificial, and giving. Church is bigger than any one of you or its pastor. Church is Jesus' legacy on earth. And I know in the landscape of church in 2016, it is awfully easy to put our energy into the right now. God would also say, consider your children's children. Consider how the way you're doing church right now is leaving a legacy for them. What will the legacy be? What will the legacy be? That is the question I leave in your hearts for prayerful consideration. Amen.